All right, this is the uh, second preseason training tape for the 2023 season. Um, I, I loosely have a theme. I'm going to call it situational awareness for this type of uh, this tape here. And we're going to go through 23 plays, um, some play scenarios, uh, a few, um, you know, what to be prepared for, what we should be thinking. The, um, as, as, we, as we mature as officials, what helps us uh, anticipate situations or potential fouls or knowing the situation understanding what a team may do or may run in those situations so uh we're going to start with this first play and let's look at the down and distance here we're, we're at fourth down and four yards to go at the uh at the 36 yard line so you know it's one thing you have to be surprised is the offense is going for it right but they're going for it in their own end. So what if they're running up to the line, what are they trying to do? You know, they're, they're thinking to themselves, we're trying to draw the defense offside. Does the, um, you know, depending on what type of time of the game, it's play 61. So you maybe think it's like near the end of the first half or something like that. Do they have any timeouts remaining that they could call during this situation? But what you'll see here is them running up to the ball real quick and then barking out signals, right? And then we have a flag thrown and um, it looks like, I think the umpire calls a false start but you know um you know i I can't say what i can't i'm not sure what i the umpire does see in this situation i don't see any uh any movement but you know i'm not looking in as closely and it's not more to be critical of the call but to you know let's go back a little bit further to the start of the play if we see somebody run up to the you know running up to the line of scrimmage like that they could be snapping the ball real quick so we have to be aware on as wings and actually, referee and umpire, does everyone get set for a, for that brief second? Okay, because if not, we have you know we have an illegal shift. You know, so they're now we're barking out signals. So um, if they do get set and they start barking out signals, referee, you should be focused on that head bob of the center. Does that head that I'm sorry, the head bob of the quarterback? Does that quarterback any make any abrupt movements with? his head that could potentially draw the defense into the neutral zone and cause an encroachment here because we know uh, uh, this could be called a short five or uh, a five gets you one, you know, situation where a, a simple five by the defense is going to get the offense a first down in this situation. And they're not really concerned if they get drawn with a false start because then they just line up and punt the ball in that situation, which they're probably going to do this either way. They're either going to call a timeout. You look at the coach walking over towards the, the line the line of scrimmage official at the top. They might call a timeout or they may just take a delay game and punt the ball in this situation. So, you know, when we're in fourth and short in your own in their own end, we should be thinking about situations like that. But if we do have a false start here, let, let's be a little bit more run in, kill the clock. Let's give our preliminary signal for the only one. OK, so next play here, we have fourth down and one. OK, uh, again, the offense is on the other side of the ball. So they're on the 40, you know, the 44 yard line. They got to get to maybe the, you know, 40 little bit beyond the 44, 43 and a half, whatever it is here. But, you know, they're in shotgun formation, which which should throw you for a little bit of a loop here because most of the time they're going to uh, want to be under center, you know, either for a quarterback sneak or a quick handoff here. But, you know, we have to have be ready. We have to be locked in. You know, look at the quarterback. He Now he runs up and then snaps the ball for a, uh, a quick sneak here but what we have to be aware of and you know we cannot as referees we cannot rely just on the line of scrimmage officials to know a legal motion you know so that that if that quarterback runs up in that situation he must set briefly it doesn't have to be for a full second but he must have a pause he cannot run up and snap the ball in a fluent motion because that is a legal motion okay in this case this quarterback is right on the edge there is that brief pause you saw it that brief pause there just for a split second, that pause, snap. I mean, it's right on that line. And I'm telling you, it's really tight. Pause, snap. Okay, so, you know, the crew did a good job here allowing this play to proceed, not calling a legal motion here. But, you know, fourth and short, we got to be aware of this situation here. And we also have to be aware of, uh, you know, defense trying to pull something here. You know, look look at the defenders trying as they see. And, and the defenders do the right thing. They, they There's no abrupt, un, uh, a non-football-like movements here. They they stem inside because they're trying to stop that quarterback sneak right there. So, um, 
you know, we have a, we'd have a good job here done by the uh, by the crew in this situation. These next three plays have to do with quick kicks. Okay, so understand and again. Look, we're the same team. We're in a fourth and long situation. You know, will they go for it? You know, they, they may. But as we see on this situation, the quarterback takes the snap and just quick kicks it. Okay. So, um, you know, a lot of you use O2Os now. And this is a good use of the O2O to let the deep officials know in this situation as a referee, hey, that was a kick. That was a kick. Because if the ball hits the ground, the deep wing may not know that it was a kick if they're watching their key. You know, if they're watching the matchup down here or maybe even up here, they may not know that uh, the quarterback kicked the ball. They may he just they may think that the ball came out weird. So if you let them know that it's a, it's a quick kick, if the ball hits the ground, they won't blow their whistle. So what are other things we have to uh, make sure that we understand on quick kicks? We're not in an obvious scrimmage kick formation, so numbering exceptions don't apply, right? There cannot be roughing the kicker. Or running into the kicker. Now we can have personal fouls if there are late hits, or late unnecessary hits on the quarterback, which then turns into the kicker. But you know, those are things that we have to run through our head. Do we have, um, you know, if somebody throws a flag for pass interference, what do we have? If here, here's another one that the person who is receiving the kick, do they get protection? Yes, they do. They get protection to catch the ball because this is a kick. So we have to be aware of all these different situations, and it's 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 all starts with somebody up front, usually the referee, yelling to the rest of the crew that this is a kick. Okay, here's here's another situation, fourth down and short in their own in their own zone. Again, the antennas go up in your in your mind, like um, why are they going for it on fourth down and you know and three on their own, you know, thirty three yard line? Are they gonna you know? They're going to punt it. They, you know, they're really confident in their defense here. But, you know, just like prior, they kicked the ball. And the ball hits the ground. So we have to make our deep wings aware of this situation, of what's going on, because they may not know. And then finally, here's another one where the goal line is involved. And what I like about this situation, you will see, we're snapping here from the 34-yard line, and our deep wings are already on the goal line. So I, I like that. So they're a the punt. The deep wing's on the goal line, so he or she doesn't even have to move. He can sit there and they can watch the kick. They recovers, come up, and then kill the clock here. So these are all situations that in your pregame, if you're having crew meetings before the situations, these are great plays to go over here. So here's another one that I like to go over, the passive versus active blockers on, on punts. So here we're going to have a punt here. You know, rainy, the ball's slippery. It's a bad punt. It hits. And let's just say, what ha what are we going to rule? And we have to be aware of this. We see number two on the kicking team right here. Let me pause it. Engaged with um, with with the blocker right there. So if number two pushes that player into the ball and the ball touches the receiving team, we're going to have first. We're going to have disregard that because they were forced into it. Um, you know, or are they like you have to make that decision whether or not that that blocker is passive or or actively blocking? And if that ball hits them, do you determine it to be, uh, you know, be legally touched by the receiving team? And if the kicking team recovers, you have to understand what to do with the ball in that situation here. OK, so, um, you know. What, I, what I'd like to see, you know, and, and we do see this by the deep wing here, he's a little bit, he's patient. We don't need to be walking up because if we're still, we can watch, we can uh, officiate this play a little bit better. We can get a spin by the umpire or even the line of scrimmage official on that side to understand whether or who touched the ball and how they touched the ball in that situation. All right, next play, um, this, is, this has to do with our signals and why our signals matter. So... We have a pass here that's thrown over the middle. It's a screen pass, right? But look at the look at the action by the umpire. So, you know, the umpire's standing there. The umpire ends up giving the tip signal. So let's rewind it back further and let's let's see if the ball was actually tipped. Okay, so number seven throws the ball. It's a little bit wobbly. We don't see any tip, but the umpire gives the tip signal. So why is that so important? It's so important for numerous reasons. If the tip happens, if if the umpire gives the tip signal, then he or she's telling the rest of the uh, rest of the crew that you know if the ball was 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 touched at the line of scrimmage, usually therefore ineligibles downfield or off, 
There could be no pass interference. Um, you know, that kind of stuff. There, there could be, uh, you know, so in this situation, the ball is snapped at the 28-yard line. He catches it right at the 28. You know, are these players downfield? Well, yeah, they are, but the ball is first touched behind the line of scrimmage, so they're okay. But if this number 32 catches the ball down, you know, a yard or two down the field and he's giving that tip signal, that's telling everyone, well, guess what? The ball was tipped at or behind the line of scrimmage, so none of that matters. So, you know, I, I think I understand why the umpire gave this signal because the ball comes out wobbly by the quarterback, but, you know, we have we only should call what we see. And in this situation, I think we made an assumption, and we, should, we shouldn't have made an assumption. But our signals do matter, and let's make sure that when we do give a signal, it's the correct signal, signal for the correct reasons. All right, next play, we have a kickoff that is a short kickoff down to the bottom side of the screen. It hits at the 30-yard line. So it um, hits at the 30-yard line. It is recovered and first touched by the, I'm sorry, it's first touched by the uh, receiving team legally. And what I want you to do is, uh, you know, you're going to see back over here, watch the referee, what the referee does. You see the referee wind it, signaling that we do have a, uh, a legal touch, which should start the clock. And then, you know, then the... Um, one of the deep wings is signaling the other way, which is great. This is, you know, I, I put this on here because this is great mechanics by this crew. We have a wind, but the last thing we should do, and you know, they probably did it, is take a peek at the clock and check our game card. So, if, you know, we write down the score and the time after every score for a reason. So we should at least see one second come off this game clock in this situation. But, uh, you know, really good awareness by this crew in this situation. Uh, another thing we're starting to see a lot of is the teams playing games with whether they toss the ball laterally or forward. And uh, it's, it can be, it can take us by surprise. It can be a little bit, uh, um, you know, shocking at first. So you look at this play and the quarterback first receives the snap here, fakes it and is standing probably at the, uh, let's say the 32 yard line. They pitch it and it's first touched. Is it first touch forward? Is it first touch backwards? So it's, it's touched at the 32. Does it is it touched at the 32? Is it lateral or is it forward? And you know, it may not seem like a big deal now, but when that the uh, when that uh, offensive player drops the ball, we have to know whether or not it's an incomplete pass or it's it's a backwards pass in this situation. And you know, line judges mainly responsible for this, but it's a difficult. You know, this is a difficult call. And what tricks your eyes here is the quarterback's fading backwards as as they throw the ball. So, you know, you have to you know focus on the ball where it's first touched in each situation to understand where what you would rule if the player drops the ball. All right, same thing. The next play is kind of similar, just another play where the, the quarterback then does does he pitch. In this case, I believe he pitches it forward. So he pitches it from about the 39-yard line. It looks like it's first touched out in front, maybe about the 38-yard line, but, you know, it's it's very close. I don't know what the, what the, uh, the, what the short wing would rule on this play. I know he's punching forward, which probably means he has it. Uh, first touch behind the line of scrimmage, but do you have it forward or backwards? And so when scouting the teams in these situations are good to know whether or not they do it this way. Maybe sometimes the referee can have a good look at this. So um, it's it's good to, uh, you know, scout our teams beforehand. Do they do this? How are we going to handle this if the player drops the ball? All right, next we're, we're looking at a few goal line plays and, you know, we have to make first thing we have to make sure on every play is our officials ready and you'll see the umpire i'm sorry the referee right here chop the play in and you'll see the short wing still running back and the umpire still running back to their position the referees and, and i see this too too much lately make sure that everyone is in position because we're at the goal line here and the referee chops it in the players are already lined up they could snap the ball right here run around here and this poor line of scrimmage official is going to have no clue what's going on. Okay, so first things first, let's make sure everybody's in position. And look, they snap the ball, and the wing at the top barely gets turned around. So if any of these players jump, that that poor uh, headlinesman is not going to know what's going on. 
so we have, a, again, a pitch forward. In these situations, the referee should, it's, it's out in the day for the referee to be able to see and judge on this play. So, um, you know, uh, those, those would be a primary for the referee. All right, here we have another fourth and three situation. You know, what are we thinking about? Hard counts. Could the quarterback run up? Um, if there's a encroachment by the d defense, we're going to have a first down just by penalty here. But here we have a situation, another pitch forward. So does the ball hit the ground? If the ball hits the ground, we have an incomplete pass. Okay, and the ball will be turned over on downs in that situation. But, but here we have a tip. Looks like the defender catches it out of the air. So we have an interception and the defense recovers. But, you know, had this not be a fourth down and the ball been dropped, we have to know how to rule in this situation. And, uh, you know, we have what I don't want the referees to do is leave it on the line of scrimmage officials because we have a block right here on the edge that, you know, is pretty important for this, this short wing here plus the two people here. We have a block here. I mean, the peripheral by the, the short wing should be able to help, but the referee having the tackle and the quarterback in their, in their view should be able to say, you know what, that was a forward pass it hit the ground or it did not hit the ground in that situation. All right, so we have a second and 10 in, in, in here. And I, I put this mainly, and we're snapping from, I think, the 19-yard line. How important it is to understand where the line of scrimmage is, okay? And if, if you watch this play, you see a pass over to the side, and it just a routine incomplete pass that happens at the 19-yard line. The defender was not early. He timed the ball almost perfectly. But what I wanted to do was talk about, you know, we always talk about the what-if scenario. What if this defender plays through the back right here and the this player is not beyond the line of scrimmage? Well, we can't have pass interference. And, you know, that should go through our heads in this situation. I mean, if we throw our flag to the spot here, we, somebody has to realize, you know what, the contact happened at the 19, the line of scrimmage happened at the 19. We can't have pass interference. What we can have is defensive holding if it rises to that level, meets that standard. But here, you know, any of the, if this contact were to be early, we would not have defensive pass interference because it was it occurred did not occur beyond the line of scrimmage. All right, um, this is the importance of understanding the line to gain, where the play is going, and the goal line here. So we're snapping at the seven-yard line. So our first, so we know both wings right here at the top and the bottom are going to work towards the goal line. What they should be doing here is work towards the goal line, throttle down around the line to gain. If you feel that they're going to get past that line to gain, then you can move a few yards down and get to our spot here. But the other important part here is we have a line of scrimmage that is very important, as I explained a few plays earlier. So we have to try to read this play. So let's let's read this play off the snap right here. So we read the play off the snap. We know that the ball's going this way. We took our breath. So we don't need, to, at the top of the screen, we don't need to be in a uber hurry. We can take a step down the field, one a step and a half. And if we stop right here, we can still help with the spot here but we can also still help with the line of scrimmage here if something were to happen. There's no need for us to bust the whole way down here because the ball's going in this direction and this line of scrimmage official down here will have that, will have that call for the, for the goal line. So um, with, with, the, with our mechanics and how they are evolving from the seven yard line in, we, are not, we do not need to be in a, a big hurry to get to the goal line. We can still officiate it, you know, like we normally do, but let's read the play. If the play is going away from us, like if we are the headlinesman in this situation, let's not, we don't have to worry about getting to the whole way to the goal line. We could stop at the line again to be able to manage the, you know, and, and that play and that uh, headlinesman at the top screen does a nice job right there. He throttles down right at the line the gain, and, and it's a good job. Now let's, let's contrast that right up here. So right here, we can see already, that wing is like is busting tail to get down there, and the ball is the quarterback is clearly going to the other direction. Okay, first, what we need to see, let's take a look at here. As this player goes in motion, we have trips at the bottom of the screen. One, two, three. So that line judge at the bottom of the screen is going to have these two players. The field judge is going to have this player. 
okay, the, the headlines at the top of the screen is going to be helping because the referee is going to be taking the tackle on the trip side. So this headlinesman needs to stay in and be able to referee the tackle on that side of the field. Also, since when they see the quarterback going the other direction, oh, I'm going to stay here also because the line of scrimmage is, is threatened. What if this quarterback runs beyond the line of scrimmage and throws a pass? This umpire is not going to see that. The line judge at the bottom of the screen is going to be on the goal line because the goal line is threatened on his or her side. Somebody has to be aware of it, and it's the line, it's the headlinesman at the top of the screen. So, like I said earlier, don't be in a hurry to get to the goal line here. Okay? Read the play, then digest it, and then make your movement based upon how you're reading the play. If the quarterback drops straight down the pass, you may take one or two steps down the field. You could still judge on the line of scrimmage, but and you'll still be able to get to the goal line if the quarterback throws to gets the pass throws the pass over the middle. But in this situation where it's clear that the quarterback is rolling to the bottom of the screen headlines, and plus the fact that you have that tackle in there for your key, since the referee has the tackle on the trip side, you need to stay put a little bit, a little bit more and not worry about getting to the goal line in that situation. All right. Next play, we have a, uh, a simple run up the middle. And this play was put on here just for, I, I'm going to call this situation where he runs down, he gets knocked to the ground, and we have a good flag for an unnecessary roughness. I just want to note two things. Uh, as you can see, the, the wing is running around to get the ball. Don't worry about the ball. They can't play without the ball. Since we just had a flag right here, let's just hang back here. All right, hang back here and just observe all the, all you know, does 22 pick up the ball and throw him back in his face? Does does 22 retaliate? You can see that a lot better from back here than right up in someone's face right here. Number two, what's important by this deep wing, by this side judge, is how he reports the foul. You're going to run to your referee and say, the result of the play is a touchdown. After the play is over, personal foul on the defense so that way there are options so we know that we're not uh we're not declining this because this is a live ball foul we can uh we can tack it on to the try or to the kickoff all right this is a this is a two play uh situation this is the end of the half and uh just bringing a few things up here we have a long pass that gets intercepted okay and i know deep wings we're not really great at spots here but we spot the ball we're, we're a couple yards off here so the deep wing does a really good job coming up and killing the ball but let's take a look we're down right here at the uh, 37 yard line and we 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 mark it at the uh 35 um you know let, let's we don't want to go where they slide we want to go where they hit so this next play there's like you know i'll say there's 30 seconds left in, in the half and you know crazy things can happen in this situation but first thing i want to point out here is um you know right here if they were to snap the ball here if there is a blade of grass between his foot and his foot we are not going to be technical okay um if there's a blade of grass we put one on we put one off looks like this person is off right now this person is off we don't split hairs. Now, if they're both of their toes were touching the 35 yard line in this situation, that's different because there's a big line here. And there's no way to put that blade of grass there. Let's not be uber technical in these situations. But we gotta be thinking about some crazy stuff. Long passes here. So look, look, we have a long pass down the sideline, which is caught. Now, wings, be patient. Okay, we don't need to move up the field too much. They're gonna run up the field. We're going to come up and kill the ball because now they pitch it backwards. They catch it and lateral backwards. We have to know. So right now, once you see that first lateral, the person on the bottom of the screen, you got to be thinking, I got to be responsible for forward or backwards passes here because it's going to be very dis difficult for this headlinesman to be able to differentiate between a forward backwards pass wherever they are right now. But what you'll see here is that headlinesman gets too close. Hang back. Because we have another backwards pass here they, and another one that gets intercepted or recovered by the defense. And you're in a horrible situation right now because you've lost your depth. 
and you're really just in survival mode right here. And, you know, the, the runner gets pushed out of bounds and you do a great job here killing the clock but you put yourself in really harm's way and you're not really doing anything but officiating in, in survival mode right in this situation. So just keep your depth and, uh, you know, be able to officiate this play a little bit better. All right, this is from the last play of the game. So the team on defense is up seven or six or whatever, and then we're going to have a Hail Mary situation. So if, if we're in this situation and the... Players start to take you into the end zone. Short wings, you can give up the goal line, okay? Because most likely, they're not going to be throwing the ball here. They're going to be throwing the ball back in, in this situation. So you want to get your depth a little bit to be able to see in here, okay? So if, if you feel that it's, it hel it's helpful to move back a little bit, then do that. If you feel that you have the best angle from where you are, then you stay here. Wings, you can, you know, headlinesman, this is where you don't read the play. You just move immediately downfield and let your line judge hold the line of scrimmage here. But what we have is a, a pass in the end zone, and uh, we do a great job with judgment here. So with the pass is thrown, they both go up for the ball, and you can see the offensive team wanting a pass interference here. But let's, you know, the camera isn't great, but let's let's take ourselves through. So this player here is the one they want the pass interference, but there he is looking for the ball. Right. And as the ball's coming down, he jumps up to bat the ball and then makes contact. I'm sorry, it's this player right here. That player jumps up, tries to bat the ball. Is there contact? Yes, but that contact's created by the offensive player. That defender has just as much right to the ball as that offensive player does right in that situation. So um it's yes, it is contact. But it's not. It, you have to judge the intent of that contact, and that intent of that contact is that defender's going up for the ball, which they have equal rights for, and, and uh, we don't call pass interference in that situation, which is a really nice job, right here. So this next play is like I think it's three or four play. I'll call it a vignette. So we're snapping the ball right here from the 49 yard line, and this is where I tell you perception can lead to problems here. Okay, and why it's important, you know, to have that discussion with the chain crew before the game. And make sure that the chain crew sets up where you tell them to set up. Because right now we have the nose of the football right on the 49 yard line. But let, let's look at the line the gain here. The line the gain right here, it looks like it is at the 39 and a half yard line. So they're setting up at the 39 and a half yard line. And why is that important? Well, let's let's watch a few plays and we'll find out why it is important. So here's the situation. And we have a sack, right? So we have a sack about the 30, you know, the 37 yard line. So, all right, we're fine. Second down and long, right? We have a run up the middle. Boom. We get back to the 46 yard line. All right. So we have third and um, looks like. At the at the uh, thirty six yard line, and we're not. And we'll see where the nose of the football is touching right here. The nose of the football looks like it's touching the. I'm sorry, the forty six yard line here. So we have a pass, and we have DPI. Okay, so that's fine. So let's count fifteen yards from the four. Let's see where the original ball was snapped. Original ball was snapped here. So 5, 10. Let's me fast forward it to the 49, to the 44 yard line. So right there. So 5, 10, 15. It's not an auto first, right? I think I got that right. Correct? So here we go. Let me go back because I think my math was wrong here. So snap from here, 5, 10, and then the last one gives you 15. But if we don't have the chain set correctly, and we don't have our spot set correctly, we could be off. Okay, so make sure, you know, and, and the crew didn't do anything wrong. It was more when I watched this first down play, excuse me as I'm jumping around, it just kind of was odd to me 
that we don't have the chains on these markers. And I know this is a grass field and I know it could be off, but let's do our best job because if the ball will snap from on that last play from here, they should not have gotten a first down. If the ball will snap from here, they should have gotten a first down. So it is very important where we initially set the ball and where we uh, march off the penalties and where the uh, where the final, because it looks right here, the ball is, you know, could it be, if it's not touching this tick mark, then they should not have gotten a first down. If it's touching here, they should have been short, but the way the chains were initially set incorrectly, they would have gotten a first down. So let's work it's let's work with our, our chain crew to make sure they set the ball, set the chains where our foot are. And umpires and, and short wings, let's put the ball, you know, if we're putting it on a line, let's make sure we put it on a tick to be crisp. Because if I'm a coach watching this play, I'm going to be a little bit uh a little bit perplexed as to why the chains are are situated in a way and then uh you know and they're not really where the ball is initially set up so again uh hopefully these plays helped you subscribe to the youtube channel wpial officials i appreciate all the comments and questions and uh feel free to challenge me on situations because uh that's how we all get better and um if you have any questions leave them in the comments and we'll talk again soon